Hey everybody, my name is Steph with Killer Sites and Killer PHP. So in this video, we're going to go over the basics of object-oriented programming in PHP. This is just a quick run-through. It's not meant as an exhaustive course. But if you've been wondering about object-oriented programming, whether it be PHP, JavaScript, C Sharp, Python, whatnot, this is a good little intro video that was going to help you to understand what object-oriented programming is all about and why you'd want to do it. So let's just jump into it. So object-oriented coding, object-oriented programming is a style of coding where you write all your code in the form of objects. Now a code object kind of looks like in code it kind of looks like a function where you have the name of your object just like you have the name of the function then you have little curly braces opening and closing and everything in between those curly braces is part of that same object so you might have an object called bananas and everything so bananas then curly brace curly brace and everything in between that uh, those curly braces is part of the banana object now I assume for this video that you've done basic PHP programming. So you know the basics, you know what a function is, a variable, arrays, that kind of stuff. If you don't, go do my beginner's PHP course, which is going to help a lot, of course. So um, I'm going to show you, well, let me show you a quick example right here. You should see some code on the screen. That's why it's I, I'm off on the side here. And you see, to create an object in PHP, you use the class keyword. So you're asking yourself, why class keyword? Why not object keyword? I don't know why. No, actually, do why? It's kind of complex and nerdy. We'll get into it later on, uh, maybe in, in another video. But all you need to know now is that in PHP and in Java and other languages, to create an object, you use the class keyword, the class keyword. So you go class, name, and then you have your curly braces, and away you go. You can see in the example here. Now, this is just the very basic. So inside of your classes, for the sake of this argument, not argument, for the sake of this video, consider a class an object. An object is a class. A class is an object. For the sake of this video, there is a subtle difference. There is a subtle difference between the two, but pretty much the same. So anyway, so I might use object. I might use class. I mean the same thing. So when you got your class code here, which is used to create objects, in code, um, uh, the class you, the class name is kind of like the function name. We use a class name to refer to that chunk of code in between the curly braces. So why create an object in the first place? How is it different from functions? Well, first of all, inside of a class, you can have functions, you can have other classes, you can have arrays, you can have any type of code in there. It's kind of cool. But more important than that, inside of a class when you use a class keyword to create a class now nerds will call it declaring a class php all of a sudden on its own gives that chunk of code that class code that you just created it gives it a whole bunch of extra capabilities it's like supersizing your code for free and we'll get into that when you get into a proper object-oriented course. You're going to learn about all the extra capabilities that this chunk of code will, will get because you've declared it a class. You've created a class. So why is object-oriented programming the most popular way to program today? There are other types of programming languages. There's functional, there's uh, procedural, and there's others. But uh, by far and away, the most popular type of coding out there is object oriented and it's a style it's a type of programming it's a way of writing code and how do you write your code you write the code by writing a whole bunch of classes or a whole bunch of objects and inside of all these objects and classes you have all the capabilities of your app so an app may have hundreds may have dozens may have thousands of objects in there and they all work together to make your big app and the reason that you write object oriented code is that it helps well there's many reasons but the big reasons I can off the top of my head is a it helps you to better organize your code into a nice little object also you get extra capabilities that come with automatically by creating objects like I said before when you use a class keyword PHP automatically gives those classes extra capability uh, another reason you want to write object-oriented code is because it makes it easier for you to work with other people to build apps. So you can have five developers working together and you can assign different tasks to them 
uh, by giving them say, you know more easily by using an object style of cat of uh, of app creation. Now, of course, some people are out there who may say, well, ah, procedural code, old style PHP is better because it's less code and blah blah blah. This could be true, and there's certain arguments to that, I suppose. But these days, if you are writing advanced PHP, commercial PHP, there's a 99% chance you're going to be writing object oriented object oriented code, and though there are other non-object-oriented languages that are slowly becoming a little bit more popular, they don't come even close. They don't come even close. 99% of modern coding these days, whether it be C Sharp, Java, Swift, Python, PHP, JavaScript, it's all object-oriented because there's so many advantages to it. Now, in closing this video, I just want to point out one thing. Uh, I'm going to point it out because nerds out there may go nuts if I don't point it out. JavaScript, though it has objects and it works in just about every aspect, it works like an object-oriented language. It's in fact a prototypical based language. And there's some subtle differences between a pure object-oriented language versus a prototypical based language. That all said and done, it has been a long while since I've written really uh, complex JavaScript code. So to be totally honest with you, I didn't have a chance to go look on Google to, to remind myself of the subtlety and the differences. For instance, as far as I remember, you don't use a class keyword with JavaScript to create a class. You actually use it with a function. But anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole I shouldn't. All you need to know, I just wanted to point out that JavaScript is technically not a pure object-oriented language, although it has many object-oriented capabilities. It is object-oriented for all intents and purposes. But some nerd, some snipey nerd might come after me if I don't point this out. You know how it is. All right, that's it for now. Ciao, ciao.